This is rebuilding a vintage open steam launch, part 18, starting work on the hull, although in this clip I'm still working on the gas burner. I forgot to drill and tap a hole in the Venturi pipe to secure the jet in place, and it would be no good if the jet fell out. So I did just that, I drilled a hole in the Venturi pipe, and then I threaded the hole that I made in the Venturi pipe, and put a 6BA bolt in there. And this will hold the jet assembly firmly in place, and stop it moving into the wrong position. This episode is really about starting work on the hull. So I've moved the hull onto the main bench, because originally it was at the other end of the workshop. But on the main bench there's a lot more light, so I can really see what I'm doing, and so can the camera. And the first thing I'm doing is removing loose bits and pieces in the bottom of the hull, these being some packing pieces that go around the boiler. The whole thing is very dirty, it's been stood around for many, many years. So first of all, I'm going to brush the thick of the dust and the filth away. And I'm doing this quite slowly, and I'm not using a very stiff brush, because I do not want to make all this dust airborne, because it will only settle somewhere else in the workshop, and who knows what's in the dust. Very shortly I'm going to use my vacuum cleaner to vacuum up all of this dust and get it out of the way. So I'm just loosening the dirt really with this soft brush. Inside the hull, approximately in the centre of the pitcher, is a small water pump that's crankshaft driven that takes water from the lake and pumps it into the boiler. At the top of the pump there's a right angled union, that's the water outlet. The water inlet comes from the lake, as you can see the pipe goes down through the bottom of the boat. But the water outlet goes to a bypass valve, and thankfully with this bypass valve wide open, the water will simply be pulled up from the lake and pumped back out into the lake. I can't say I'm particularly looking forward to this next job, but thankfully I have lots of these. These are spring clamps, and they're really essential for this job. You can see the principle. I'm using a thin piece of brass, I'm coating the piece of brass in cyanoacrylate adhesive, and then I'm spreading this adhesive quite liberally underneath the planking. So once this adhesive has been applied, all I need to do is use these spring clamps to hold the original decking veneer, which is loose, down to the wood underneath. And once the cyanoacrylate adhesive cures, I don't think it's ever going to come loose again. I've done a lot of this kind of planking. These are not individual planks, this is actually wood veneer by the look of it, but it's the same principle and the cyanoacrylate adhesive soaks into the wood very well, and I've never ever had any come adrift. If you're doing a job like this, I have a suggestion. You will find it very boring, and if you find it boring and get fed up of it, stop doing it for a while and go and do something else, then come back to it with renewed enthusiasm. I seem to remember saying the same thing on the DVD set about building a steam launch, and by the way it's called How to Build a Model Steam Launch and it's an A to Z of how to do it on three DVDs. That's the advertising over, back to the job. I really do have many of these spring clamps, because you can't have enough of them to do this job. They need to be left in place until the adhesive is fully cured. I bought these via the internet auction site that we all know and love, but I would think you can also get them from your local S&M supply store. And already I've got to the front part of the boat, and the veneer is not stuck hardly at all at this point, so I'm putting plenty of adhesive underneath. I'm wiping off any surplus that gets on the planks, but it's not a major issue, it does come off very easily, and I will of course be giving the decking a light rub down before wiping into it a coat of polyurethane varnish, just to help the waterproofing and make it look better. Looking at the paintwork on the outside of the hull, I think I'm going to have to give it a full new coat, a rub down and a proper paint job, because I can't really touch it up. It was easy on the metal steamship, because all the hull was built from steel panels, but this is one very smooth hull, and if I touch it up with paint it's going to look awful. I will turn the hull upside down, and give the entire outside surface a coat of paint. Not just one colour, it will be red and cream as you see it at the moment, but not damaged as you see it at the moment. Thankfully it's nearly there now with the spring clamps and you can really see I do have a lot of them. One can never have too many spring clamps. I also have some very large ones. But anyway, I'm not going to show them all because I don't want any viewers getting over excited with this amount of spring clamps in one video. With all the spring clamps in place it's now time to withdraw the propeller shaft and there it goes. This is the propeller and it's threaded onto the shaft and then there's a grub screw that stops it rotating loose but it is actually loose, 
So I'm taking the grub screw out and I'm going to just have a general look at how tight it is. I may put this back in with some Loctite as well as the grub screw because the last thing I want to happen is for the propeller to fall off. This next job takes a little bit of thinking about and much care. As you can see some of the decking veneer is damaged around where the rudder clamps to the deck. Don't forget this is a pond launch and it was arranged so that you could lock the rudder in position. But the pressure of the locking clamp and the washers that were there if you watch the first video have damaged the veneer over time. And I noticed there are some mounting holes as though a metal plate's been screwed over here at some time. But this is a very old boat and this fitting's long gone. What I'm doing on screen at the moment is truing everything up and you'll notice how slowly I'm taking the drill through. First of all I use a smaller drill, then a larger drill. Because everything is so out of alignment the rudder is very stiff which makes it unsuitable for radio control. So what I'm going to do is put a shaft through here but it has to be perfectly vertical and in line with the rudder. And as you can see when I put the rudder in from the bottom the rudder is much more towards the stern than it is towards the, well, the front part of the stern. It's not in the middle of the hole. Obviously, if I fit the rudder now, it's very free moving because the hole in the top is about three times bigger than the rudder shaft. But if I made a close fitting rudder stern tube now, the rudder would be stiff again. What I'm doing here is using a bit of sandpaper because there is a little bit of damage to the bottom part where the rudder mounts. In this close up, you can see where the original rudder fitting was. And as I said earlier, that's long gone. And you can also see the damage to the decking. Now you can see that the rudder fits centrally in the hole in the decking because I used a rotary file to move it into the correct position. The next job will be making fittings for this to cover this damage and make the rudder work. The next few episodes are going to be quite interesting. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.